Hello there. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato here at the Hayes FM, and we are in Mississauga, and we've got so much interesting things going on. Stay tuned for the entire show, believe me, because we're going to hit everything you can imagine. And what's the subject? The subject is sports and the Mississauga Sports Council. And we have Catherine Holland, who's the executive director of the Mississauga Sports Council. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Linda. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's great having you here as well. And we also have Susan Stewart, who is actually a board of director for the Mississauga Sports Council. But Susan, you're also an Atlanta 96 Olympian, as well as being a Mississauga Sports Hall of Famer. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for having me this morning. I am so overjoyed to be here with you and speak to sports. Well, exactly. I mean, that. Uh, when did you start? You must have, how old were you when you started playing sports? Oh, my goodness. I think I believe I, believe I started in junior high at Homelands Senior Public School. I think I, w- I played for the Air Mills Soccer uh-huh. Club, and that was my first actually organized team sport that I played in wow. Minnesota. Wow, and I just you just loved it. Obviously, you were good at it, but it just it just hit you hard. I mean, you obviously uh, it was. You know, they say that there's a lot of God given talent, but there's a heck of a lot of hard work too. Yes, I mean, playing for Air Mills, it was fun. The only thing that I did not particularly was, was not fond of is playing in the cold and the rain. Oh, uh, that, well, that's on. true. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I had a great time, the team com- camaraderie, and just the opportunity to play in different areas of Mississauga against other teams was fun and exciting. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, I know that you're doing great things with the Mississauga Sports Council right now. And, you know, Catherine, maybe you can give us an update of where you're at. Well, we have, uh, it's an exciting year for us. It's, uh, I think most people are aware the City of Mississauga City Council has just approved a Mississauga Sport Plan, and we're excited to, moving forward, we're one of the uh, early communities to create a sport plan and have it processed uh, without a legacy piece of the Olympics or, or Pan Am Games. Now, we do have the Pan Am Games coming in 2015, so we're excited about that, but thanks to Mayor McCallion and a task force and, and the city and staff and council. So we now have a, an approved sport plan made up of seven uh, strategic goals, which include sport leadership, sport for all, sport for life, celebration and promotion of sport, building capacity of our sport system, sport tourism, and sport infrastructure. And going forward over the next number of years, we are aligned, and currently the Sports Council is aligning its strategic plan to support these initiatives, and along with the city and a number of uh, groups, take a leadership role in supporting our grassroots sports groups in in their success and encouraging uh, the whole community to get involved in Sport for Life for All. Well, you know, I think that it's a, it's a huge development for that because, I mean, we've got, what, over 800,000 residents now in Mississauga. You know, we have tremendous exposure, not only to, like, uh, you know, if you think of the different sports, you, of course, you have your hockey and your baseball, your basketball, your soccer. But, you know, we go further than that, don't we, Susan? I think we've got a, oh, a multitude yes. of other types of sports as well. Cricket is, is, Cricket. is moving forward quickly. Wow. And, and we have the cross. I mean, I think a great celebration that, that Catherine um, I forgot to mention was our was our um, banquet that we're going to be having in June, the first week of June on the Thursday, and that's a celebration of sport in our community. And and it, when you come to that event, you see the vastness, the diversity in sport in Mississauga. That's incredible. Well, you know, it's funny because, like, if you think about cricket, I think, where where did cricket originate from? Because I know it's not originated from here. I've never seen a cricket game other than on TV. I just want to mention, mm-hmm. it's five, it takes five days to watch one of the cricket matches. It takes five days. Five days. So really? It's, it's a long, long, long. It takes five days to watch it. Yes. Oh, yes. my goodness. I did not know that. <laughs> yes. it's, a, it's, a, it's an event. So just prepare yourself when you go watch one. So so you're talking, I mean, if you've got an event like that, you've got a tremendous social entity to that if you're there for five full days. 
Well, and, and if I can say, I guess in the busy world uh-huh. of, of North America and, uh, and Mississauga, cricket groups have found a way to uh, condense that Reader's Digest version. We have some lovely facilities uh, in Mississauga at uh, the Iceland uh, Cricket Pitch and Avebury and a number of other locations around the community, but we're looking to grow that. But uh, basically, the groups have had to condense the time frame. And you're right, it's still a social event, but th- the games can run uh, even as, as short as, as two hours uh, or, or, you know, have a tournament for the day. And they're looking to engage uh, right from uh, the younger students. It's uh, a learning uh, cricket game called Kanga, where the young ones can, can learn the, the ropes of the game with the family, and then right up through uh, high school events. And uh, there are now even some older adult leagues where a lot of the cricketers, uh, we, and because we have such a diverse uh, community, people are coming from around the world uh, to live here. Cricket is a common theme, very much like soccer or the world uh, football game, where it kind of brings everybody together together, they recognize it, they can step on the field and have a game and all of a sudden there are no, it's kind of like the United Nations. And, <laughs> and it's, it's terrific to see. In there. Well, you know, it's interesting, Catherine, you hit a real key point. And, you know, the interesting part is a key point is sometimes people, I, I mean, I can see it as well. I have to actually say, okay, fine, I've got to stop and see what's going on. You know, you can get so caught up with your work. And it really isn't healthy. I mean, staying healthy is about leading your life in balance. And balance has to be some extracurricular activity. We have a, a wide variety of events. Again, uh, we, we work to a Sport for Life for All approach to how we uh, engage the community. As Sue had mentioned, we are excited. Uh, coming on June the 5th is our 40th Mississauga Sports Dinner. It, actually, the Sports Council was created in 1983 by an order in council, and so we've been around for uh, just over 31 years. The dinner was created in 1974 when the city uh, became uh, incorporated by the Mississauga News. And the Mississauga News, uh, as part of its actual annual Sports Week event, had a sports dinner and our first Hall of Fame inductions at Sheridan Mall. And it was an exciting event over the years. Uh, And when the Sports Council was created in 1983, the uh, Mississauga News passed the baton to the Sports Council to take over things like the Sports Dinner, Sports Week, which align nicely with our programs in support of the community. So on June the 5th, we are celebrating the 40th annual Mississauga Sports Dinner. We're excited to uh, invite the community out to celebrate uh, the spirit of sport and recognize those who not only are athletes and coaches and officials who work diligently to support the sports system, but also the many uh, humble uh, people behind the scenes. We have so many volunteers and administrators and people who are helping um, make the sport community successful in Mississauga. And without all of these wonderful volunteers, we wouldn't have the uh, community coming together with the the benefits of sport. Well, that's the key point. I mean, volunteers, you know, volunteerism, you know, it's a funny word. I've got to throw that out there. And the reason is, is because see, sometimes people look at volunteerism and think, geez, you know what, I don't have the time, I can't fit it in my schedule. I mean, you're there, they're there, you know, you look around, you see so many family members that are kind of just hanging out watching the game, but boy, could they even add a lot, couldn't they? Yes, I I agree. I think like for me, I'm very fortunate to be where I got in in sport, the the elite level. I thank God for my mother and the people that volunteer, drive me to to practices or or, um, games. Is, is I have to thank a lot of the volunteers that I've been surrounded with who have helped me, who invested in me, who pushed me, who encouraged me, who helped me to be who I am today is because of the volunteers. I mean, I just believe in giving, giving what someone has given me, that we should be able to, I don't know the word, we should be able to duplicate that. Yeah, absolutely. Re- you know, reciprocate yeah, it and give it. it right back. You know, you know, you know you're know, 100%. It's common sense to me. It's a mm-hmm. no-brainer. I mean, you give, you give to somebody else, somebody else gives, and you just keep going. And that's what that's that's how our sport is going to grow, but for, through fresh ideas. You know, people giving what they can give. Like, today's parent needs to be involved with with their child's development. So you can't just come and sit there with your paper like you got to get involved. That's the only way that you're going to help your child also, but also for you to understand what it takes for them to do what they're doing. I think that they need to be involved. Well, um, yeah, and and doesn't it I think that as a parent, I mean that's how I was when my kids were growing up and 
um, you know, you have a much more positive feeling about the sport as well. And I yeah. think I think for for our, our children getting involved in sport right through to Sport for Life, you're bringing together the community. And for these children growing up, they're getting all kinds of added benefits in the form of discipline and determination and having community role models. And it really takes takes a village to raise an athlete. And it's not just about going to the Olympics or or the Pan Am Games or being a pro athlete. It's about learning life skills and having people around you that you can respect and learning the rules and learning how to win gracefully, but also how to lose gracefully. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato here at the Hayes FM. I've got some great guests today. Catherine Holland, Executive Director, and Susan Stewart, Board of Directors for the Mississauga Sports Council. As a matter of fact, Susan was also an Atlanta 96 Olympian and uh, a Mississauga Sports Hall of Famer. So hang tight. We'll be right back. 